right, so I guess the next thing that we can do is um, take it for a bit of a spin and see what happens. and it's what's that tapping out at about six pound which is perfect especially right now without the tune so I'm gonna go and put it away before I get too excited and um, I've got a couple of things I want to do to it before I get it tuned I want to service the gearbox give that every chance and my exhaust is touching as well so I need to get it up on a hoist sort that out I'll do that when I do the transmission um, I need to do the plugs, I need to do the map sensor, and I'm waiting for a boot for the intake, um, part of the intake, so I can fit that properly so it's connected to my airbox. So yeah, a couple of little things to do, but she's driving, going, you can hear that exhaust bumping away. But I'm pretty stoked, man, it sounds good inside, it sounds unreal. Let's give it one more little squirt on here before I park it up. Awesome, I'm stoked. Alrighty, so I'm booked in for a tune next Wednesday. So a few things I've got to do, change the plugs, gap them up for the turbo. I still haven't got around to changing that map sensor. I'm gonna do that now after I've done the plugs. I wanna change the fuel filter, um, service the transmission, the stuff underneath I'm not doing today because I've booked in at my mate's workshop on Saturday to do the transmission and do everything underneath. I've got to sort out my exhaust, the bang in the exhaust, which is just the part that's hitting and I've just got to bend that out of the way. So I'll do that on Saturday. But today, plugs, map sensor, we'll put this back together. Um, I'm still waiting for a coupling for this. I ordered one and they sent me the wrong one, so I don't know what I'm going to do. I just need a bit of silicon that's three inch by two inch so I can put that on um, but yeah anyway so Iridium plugs they last for about 150,000 k's I don't know how many k's this one's done I've got new ones anyway and for the turbo we need to gap them at 0.8 so I've got my trusty old feeler gauges that I've had since I was what 16 and that was a very 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 long time ago and they've had a flogging so but they're trusty they work fine so I'm going to gap these plugs up, chuck them in, put the cover back on, that's done. Alright, plugs are done, throttle body's off, I don't know if you can see in there, let's see if we can get it to have a look. You'll see the butterflies in there, they're locked open, so that's how we want them to stay, without any vacuum. So now the map sensor is behind the fuel rail there, that's it there. I'll pull that one out and replace it with the one for the turbo, which is a two bar. I think these are one bar or just over. Alrighty, one thing you need to know about the original NA map sensor on this side, from a turbo map sensor, has a different plug. So you can't just plug it in. So what I did, I bought myself an adapter kit. So it's just an extra cable that allows me to adapt the turbo map sensor onto the NA motor. Righto, that's all back together. The next job I want to do while I'm up here is put some heat shields on. It does it get hot under here? My oath it does. Remember this um, hose that we put in here the other day? I stopped reading boost. I was getting negative nine. It's just, it got hot in here and obviously with the vacuum it sucked it shut and that's it, it stayed shut. It gets hot under here, man, so I'm gonna replace that with some better vacuum hose. That's no big dramas. I just gotta go up the rep car and buy some. Um, so one thing I did buy as I was collecting everything was a turbo cover. This is made out of some vol magic volcanic substance. Who knows? Anyway, that's going on there. 
and I will modify that heat shield that I was talking about at the start of the video and stick that back on here. So we'll do that now. Well, we're getting a bit low in light, but I've got my heat shield, my heat cover on the turbo and my modified heat shield. You can see where I've cut it away on my um, manifold. All right, let me tell you where I'm at. I've got my coupler, I've got my vacuum hose. That's all well and good. Went to start it after I put the um, two bar map sensor in it yesterday and it won't start. Um, it just doesn't like it. So I thought I'd try and put my, just plug in my map sensor, my original one on the side and I actually got it to run. It idles like it's got a massive cam and it's just chug a lug and black smoke and it'll rev, but it just blows heaps of black smoke. So just stuff that you don't hear about or people won't tell you when you're doing one of these conversions. I want to make sure that you guys know exactly what works and what doesn't. Um, so what I'm in the process of doing now is putting the NA map sensor back in it so I can at least drive it. So tomorrow I've got to take it to my mate's workshop. So we can service the transmission and just go underneath and sort stuff out. And then on Wednesday, I've got to drive it down to um, about 30 k's to the tuner. And without the map sensor, the correct map sensor, I'm not going to be able to drive it anywhere. So I'm going to have to change the map sensor when I arrive at the tuner or if he's willing to do it, but I'm happy to do it. I'll take my tools, do a quick swap. Then he can put a tune in it, hopefully, and it'll work. Um, but like I said, this particular problem did not know about. And since I did a bit of searching on the internet, nothing specifically on this conversion, but looking at upgraded map sensors for turbos, everyone says that it just won't work until you put the tune in it. So there we are. Righto, so it's getting late, but I've got it all back together with the standard map sensor. Took it for a spin and the thing absolutely hammers. It's really impressive without a tune. Um, it's kind of hitting up around the six to seven PSI on the boost gauge. Um, but I think it's safe to drive if I take my time. So tomorrow morning off to my mate's workshop, we'll service that transmission, fix the exhaust, change the fuel filter, and um, that's it till the tune on Wednesday. Here we are underneath. Bit of a ding in the sump we'll straighten it out when you take it off and my exhaust is hitting on the floor here so just going to bend it out of the way that noise is the fan because it's like 46 degrees today or something i tell you what that transmission's hot one thing i haven't mentioned i don't think is a transmission cooler which i was supposed to get yesterday didn't arrive i've not had the best luck with my parts but that's an original factory Transmission cooler, absolutely good for nothing. So it's cooled by the um, engine coolant. And if your engine's hot, this is gonna be hot. Your transmission's gonna be hot. So basically we're running a independent air-cooled transmission cooler at the front. Um, and I have got a kit ordered, but it just didn't arrive. So that'll probably have to happen another day, unfortunately. But with these transmissions, Apparently the best thing for these is to keep them cool and you'll get a better life out of them. So that's one thing you need to consider. So here we are, pans off, a little bit of metal here. Magnet's got a bit of stuff on it, which is pretty normal. Um, it's like pan of a gold. Anyway, you give this thing its best chance. Now that big ding is even going up into the filter. So whatever hit it, hit it hard, but we're replacing all that. We are done. I don't have a lot of faith in this transmission anyway, as far as turbos go, they don't have a good rep, standard anyway, and I don't know if there's much you can do to make them stronger. But anyhow, it is what it is for now. I do have a spare transmission if I need to change it down the track, so we are good to go for the tune on Wednesday. One thing I will point out is that uh, engine management light's gone and I've been driving the car around now for about half an hour and it's not come back on which is quite surprising um, I'm not saying that this tune is good or that everything's right it's just interesting that that light's gone out so anyway 
I've got to try and get rid of a quarter of a tank of E10 so I can put some decent fuel in it for Wednesday as well so I'll use this car this weekend and just take it easy but it's running good it's um it feels really good it's maxing out at six pound it'll sometimes spike to seven um on the gauge but that's safe levels it's running rich which is also safer than lean my liters per 100 kilometers is really high it's about 18 and that probably has something to do with that fuel pressure regulator pumping extra fuel in without the tune so saturday afternoon i come out to lock up put the air conditioner on after i've been doing bits and pieces and i find my transmission cooler at the front of my house courier come on saturday so anyway it would have been nice if i had it while it was up on the hoist but it's here and um we'll get it on so while we're on transmissions i was chatting to my mate this morning who knows a fair bit about these and he told me that the btr transmission which is a four speed box in these guys um i knew they were computer controlled but they run a they're very soft in the gear change and that's the thing i've noticed since putting the turbo on it's really soft in the gear change and a soft gear change means slippage and the more horsepower you run through slippage the more um, wear and tear and you're going to wear the box out really quick but he told me that the computer can be programmed um, to run 100 percent line pressure um, at whatever range you want so um, I'm going to speak to my tuner on Wednesday. He has the correct program that can do that apparently and make sure that we're getting 100% and that way when it changes gears it's it locks into gear straight away. There's no slippage, less chance of wear. So I pulled the front bumper off, had a look. There's not a lot of places to put this um, transmission cooler. A lot of people put it on that side but then you've got to run lines all the way around to the transmission outlets on that side. Um, and it needs to have fresh, cool air getting to it. And I found the perfect spot that I think is going to be unreal. A couple of little bit of tweaking, but right behind the grill. Easy peasy. All I had to do was with my whizzer just take a little bit of thickness out of the back of that. And um, I'm trying to do this one handed. There we go. Beautiful. All I'm going to do is put a bit of rubber, old rubber tube around the top and bottom, and that ain't going anywhere. Yeah, don't chuck out your old car tubes. Keep at least one of them because you can use them for all sorts of stuff. I've always got one handy. And for the record, you'll need four meters of hose, not the meter or less that they give you in this kit. Four meters. So with a little bit of heat, you can pull these transmission connectors off and um, stick them on your hose. You'll probably need at least 7 16 um, half inch if you can get it, but you're starting to get too big on the other end. So a bit of a squeeze. I'm actually using 3.8 and I'm getting it on there, but it's a bit of work. There's only one more thing I want to do. I'm not doing it today though. I'll wait till I get back on my mate's hoist is pull this um, cooler off, disconnect the water and then loop that around because these are known for going on the inside and you end up getting water in your transmission now i'm not connected i'm going to get water escaping from the engine and good chance of overheating if it ever leaks so that's something i'm going to do later so that's it that um cooler you can see it it sits in there nice i've just been for a test drive it's not even anywhere near hot compared to what it used to be like and um that's pretty much it. The next time I see you will be at the tuner. I can't wait.